permissions in Linux. You know, it's one of those things that's actually somewhat difficult to explain because the way that permissions are handled in Linux are, you know, it's a bit different than, you know, Windows, for example. And um, what I want to do, or at least attempt in this video, is to explain that to you guys so that you'll understand how to read the permission string inside your Linux system. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here we have my laptop again, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my file listing in my home directory. Nothing too amazing here, but I want to basically go over the permission string. But we also need some files, so I'm going to use the touch command. I'm going to do test1.txt, and then I'll do test2, test3, and so on. So you see we have a few files here. We also have a bunch of folders. So I want to go over what all of these characters mean here on the left-hand side. I've mentioned before that the first character, in this case is D on this line, refers to whether or not as a file or a directory. Now sometimes I'll say folder when I mean to say directory. You know, I use that interchangeably, but file, you know, folder, directory, same thing. So we know bin is a directory or a folder. It starts with D. In fact, all of them do until you get down here where we have test123, which is simply just a hyphen. A hyphen means file. As I've mentioned previous in the series, you know, most of the time files are colored white, folders are blue, and colorization changes from one terminal emulator to the next. But some distributions actually don't even colorize output. So how does that work? So alias ls. This is the alias that I'm using for my ls command. And most distributions will use color auto as part of their alias by default. So when you first install your distribution and then you create a user account for yourself, the default bash rc includes maybe not everything that I have here, but it will almost always include this part right here. So that basically sets up the colorization. If I remove that line or that section here, then everything would be the same color and you wouldn't be able to tell just based on the color because everything would be the same color. So you can only tell then by the first character. Now there's other things that this first character can be that are outside the scope of this video. 90% of the time or more, it's either gonna be a D or a hyphen, which means a directory or a file. Go ahead and clear the screen. Let's just take a closer look at this. So we have all these funny characters right here. We have RWX, RWX, R hyphen X, and there's some variations here. You see that it changes a bit as you go down. And believe it or not, this string right here actually tells you what you are or are not allowed to do with that directory or that file. In this case, we have the bin directory, and we see we have RWX, RWX, R, then hyphen X. So what does that mean? Well, actually the permission string is broken down into four different pieces. So we have the permission string right here. We have actually four sections. The first section is just one character. I've already gone over that. It's either a D or a hyphen in most cases to designate a directory or a file. But then there's three other sections and the others are split into three. So this is section number two, this is section number three, and this is section number four. Now, section number two right here refers to the user or the person that owns that resource. Now, in my case, this right here, the, my name, this is the user field right here. That's the user that owns this. So this bin directory is owned by me. And since this right here has RWX as the second field or section, that means my user has RWX. The third section here is for group. It designates what the group is able to do. And then the last one is everybody else. Everybody that is not this user and not a part of this group, they fall into other, aka world, which just means the general public. Just think of this section as everybody on the planet. What is everybody able to do? And everybody else. So this is basically our hyphen X. Now each one of these bits could either be a letter or a hyphen, but they each can be a designated letter or a hyphen. So for example, you're not gonna ever see a W here, never. You might see a hyphen, you might see an R, but you're not going to see an X right here. 
Each one of these can be R or hyphen. This can be a W or a hyphen, an X or a hyphen. They don't change. You don't. You can't jumble these around. You can't put the X here, the W over here. No, they're always like this. It's either R W X or some combination of that or a hyphen. So if you do see the letter here, that means it has that bit. If you don't see it, it's going to be a hyphen. So for example, this set of three right here, this group, refers to the group, which is my name. They have nothing. But this, this group has no access. Now by default, I have full access to this because I'm the owner. I'm this. RWX. I have everything. Group has absolutely nothing. And other has absolutely nothing as well. So other people would not be able to see this directory at all because they don't have permission to see that. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a NextCloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365 friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. Um, now that you know what each category or group means, well, what do the letters mean? I think R is probably obvious. That means read. So in the case of this file right here, I have read permission. I can read this file. I can see what's inside that file. But I also have W, which means I can change this file. I can add something to it. I can add a sentence. I could do a grammar check on the file. Now, these are empty files because they're all zeros. But I can add anything to them. I can also delete them if I wanted to. I have full ownership, but I don't have X. What is X? X means execute. I can put you know, commands in there and run that text file as if it were a program and have it actually execute that. So I can do that, but in this case, it's not actually able to do that. So I'm not able to run it as a program, but I am able to read it and write to it. In this case, the group has read permissions, doesn't have write. So if I was not my user, I was somebody else, but I was a member of this group, then I'd be able to read the file, but I wouldn't be able to change it. Now, everybody is able to read it, actually. Even if I'm not this user and I'm not in this group, anybody can see what's inside this file. So if you have a file that's like, for example, your accounting information for your company, you really don't want this to be read because that means everybody can look at it. And I don't know about you, but I don't think company finances are a good idea to be in the public domain. And I'll give you an example of a script real quick so you can see what that looks like. So I'll do um, nano my script dot sh, which is very common. And I'm just going to do, you don't have to follow along, but every almost every script begins with this. It's just a hash bang. It just basically is which interpreter is intended to interpret this. doesn't matter. Um, I'll just do ls. I'll save the file, exit out. We can see that we have my script dot sh right here. Now to run it as a script, you do dot forward slash and the name of the file. I'll press enter. Permission denied. Why is permission denied? Well, probably already know, but we really truly don't have permission to run it as a script because we don't have X. We need that. We need this bit right here to be able to run it as a program. Now I can read from it. I can write to it, but I can't execute it. So what do I do? Well, I could use I could use chmod, the change mod command, plus, because I want to add something, x, and that's what I want to add. And I want to add it to my script.sh. So if I press enter, you can see that now it's green, which is you know just a colorization thing, not always going to be there. But we do have x. Now, because I didn't specify who gets x, everybody got it. So now everybody can execute it. So I could do dot forward slash my script. And it's going to do ls. It's ls plain with no aliases or anything like that. 
which is, this is absolutely a useless script. I mean, who would write a script just to run ls? Typing ls is fewer characters than typing this. So obviously that was a lame example, but you get the idea. You could put some Linux commands in the script and run it and give yourself permission to do so by giving you the yourself the x permission or the x bit, which is execute, which allows you to execute it as a script. It's very common for administrators to write scripts and they'll put all kinds of commands to customize or configure a system in there. And that's what they'll do, but you know, that's outside the scope of this video. But what I've just done by showing you the chmod command is I showed you how to change permissions. So I can actually take it away just as easily by changing the plus to a minus. And of course we see now that it, that execute bit is gone. Now I can add that back simply chmod plus x, the name of the file, but I can add it to a specific person. So I can say, you know, user plus x. So the user gets execute. And we can see now that I have permission to run it, but nobody else does. So if I wasn't my user, then, you know, I wouldn't be able to run that. I need to be me because this second group right here refers to the owning user, which is me. And I am able to execute that. But since the group and other don't have X, then they cannot run this as a script. If I wanted to give everybody access to basically do anything they want with it, I could simply do chmod a for all plus rwx my script.sh. And now we have this as being completely wide open. This is what it looks like when you have everything. So I can run it as a script, so can everybody else, and I can read and write to the file, so can everybody else. So hopefully this file doesn't contain any proprietary or personal information because everybody on the system now has access to this. That's not really a good thing, but if it's just a generic thing that doesn't have any private info, it's probably not that big of a deal. I can also take it, you know, individual things away, like I mentioned, so chmod, let me go ahead and clear the screen actually. So chmod, I'll do um, g for group minus rwx, now press enter. It's gonna look a little weird, but we can see that everyone has access to read and write to the file and execute it. Group doesn't, but I do. So basically everybody's gonna be able to write to, to this file as well, but I could simply do, you go ahead and bring that back. I do O for other minus rwx. And here we see I have read, write, and execute permissions, but no one else does. And one thing I wanna to mention to you guys too is that if it's a file or a directory, then the permissions are handled differently. So an example of that is a directory here, um, bin. Everyone has pretty much everything, but read means something different to a directory. That's not a file. Well, actually everything is technically a file. We're not gonna get into that. But in this case, it's a directory and I can see what's inside it. I can do that because I have R for read. So I can read the contents of the directory. W means that I can change the contents inside the directory. I can add something to it. I can remove something. I can change its contents. In this case, X, means that I can change into the directory. So what happens if I do, um, I'll do mkdir test dir, and we see that we have test dir down here. So I'm gonna do chmod minus x test dir. Clear the screen and let's go inside. Permission denied. Even though I own this, you say I have read and write, I'm the owner, I don't have execute, so I can't CD into the directory. Permission is denied, so I can do chmod user plus x tester. You can see how the permissions have changed and I can actually go into the directory and now I can, I can do that. I have nothing inside it right now though, so it's an empty directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back and we can see what the permissions are right now rwx, and then read and read. Everybody's got read at least. What I'm gonna do is chmod minus w tester. And now we have really weird permissions for a directory. There's read and execute, so I can cd into it. 
can I ls? I can ls. So what can't I do? Well, let me go ahead and do touch test file permission denied. Why is permission denied? Well, because I don't have write privileges. I can't change the contents of it. I can read what's in it. I can go inside it because I have execute, but I can't change the contents that are inside it. So that's just to show you that that's different than a file because a file reading means I can see what's in the file. I can, I can print the contents of it or read the contents of it. Write means I can add a new line, I could change something, I can do spell check, whatever I want. And then the ex execute bit, which these files don't have, this one does though, that means I can run it as a script. So that's what that means. So permissions gets a little bit more advanced from here, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys. I would recommend just understanding everything that I've gone over in this video. There's numerical methods of changing permissions and things like that that I'm not going to get into, but I wanted to make sure you at least had this and then you can get a handle on permissions. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. And I'm working on re other videos in this series. So stay tuned and you'll see those on my channel very soon. So thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.